Hey everybody, welcome back to Wilson Builds. If you're new here, I'm Zach. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're returning from a previous video on my YouTube, thank you again. If you're returning from my Instagram, or I guess that's my only real means of what you would return from, but I appreciate all the support nevertheless. And uh, thank you for showing up to today's video. You guys consistently coming back and supporting me greatly motivates me to keep making these videos for you guys. And I can't thank you guys enough. We're coming up to like 4,400 subscribers now. And uh, it's been, been a really cool experience and I'm super happy I could share it with you guys. But anyways, guys, I, you probably saw the title of the video today. Um, we're not doing any car work. I mean, we probably could jump on a few jobs, but um, the Mercury is a bit of a standstill as we wait for parts. The Roadster, we have a lot of the parts in, but we need to have the body on to finish what we need to do on the chassis. And to finish the stuff for the body, it also has to be on the chassis. So we're a few days behind, but we're, uh, we've started filming the other video, but we just, it just won't be done for this Friday. So I figured, um, this has been on my goal sheet for a while to do an introductory video. So I figured what a better time to do it. Um, it was kind of in my top three. Uh, my first one was obviously upload a video. My second one was get 500 subscribers. And my third goal was a thousand subscribers and upload an introductory of myself. And I think uh, about time we did that. I mean, it might not be that interesting of a video, I guess, but uh, we'll see. I guess uh, you guys can tell me at the end in the comments. But uh, anyways, let's get into the video. Alright guys, I'm gonna hop right into the video. If you don't know already, my name is Zach Wilson. I live on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. I live on the southern end called Victoria, if you're not familiar. And I created my YouTube channel because I wanted to share everything with you guys. Whether I'm doing it right or I'm doing it wrong, eh, at least I'm doing it is kind of the thought in my head. So I've had overwhelming support from both my family, especially my fiance Zoe. And uh, it's, it's, been, it's been awesome having them on my back and then, or them on my back, no, them on my side. But uh, then I've talked to other YouTube guys, uh, someone who I respect dearly, uh, Lee Grant from LG Speed and Custom. He was the kind of the final send off because I was like, well, I want to start uploading. I don't know what I'm doing, etc." And he just said, just do it and see where it goes. So I did it. And uh, having, you know, the support of people who I respect in the building community and my family has been huge and uh, I don't regret a second of uploading that first video six and a half months ago. I was filming for about probably 10 months now, and I said to myself, if I can create 10 videos edited, I'll upload one and see where it goes, and if it goes poorly, I'll probably upload you know, once a month, but if it goes good, I'll do you know, every Friday or try to be that consistent, and uh, as you guys know, we upload every Friday, so it's been pretty good. So as far back as I can remember, I've always been immersed in the kind of like collector, antique, classic realm. And the cool thing I know now, which I didn't know when I started, was how all the different avenues of collecting, whether it be a classic car, signs, uh, old magazines, stuff like that, speed parts, they all fall into the same group of people, you know, probably 90% of the time. And I didn't know that as a kid, you know, I just liked old stuff. I liked the license plates, I like signs. And, uh, you know, I remember seeing my first Hot Rod magazine, I believe it was a 1950s issue. I have it right there on the wall so we can look at that after. But uh, I didn't know when I was a kid that it all intertwined. And the real reason I found that out was because I went to my dad's friend's house and he had an old car in there and on the wall he had old porcelain signs and he had Hot Rod magazines. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. He has, likes all the same stuff as me. And I mean, that was really kind of sparked my interest in the classic cars because I liked everything else and it just kind of fell into place. I mean, even as a kid, I would like the classic car Hot Wheels. Uh, my dad had a 63 C10 and I remember grabbing that steering wheel when I was three or four and just kind of pretending to drive. And that was like the coolest thing to me. If he picked us up from school in that, I was like so stoked. And uh, we called it the rusty truck because it was in primer red. And that was probably what really sparked my interest in old trucks was that guy. 
and uh, it was just like the coolest thing to me and I think that's what really kind of put me on the path was seeing collectors collect everything I liked and then the classic cars kind of just followed. It's just a little bit more expensive than a porcelain sign, I guess, in most scenarios. As you can see on the wall behind me, we have all our porcelain signs and that is a huge part of my life whether um, it be a small one, a big one. Um, I have some at my house as well in a cabinet, but uh, this is a huge part of why I'm here. So I respected the hell out of my porcelain signs, uh, if that makes any sense. But finding porcelain sign, no matter what condition it is, is like finding gold to me. I mean, my Union 76 sign there, I bought off my friend's dad, and that was a local sign to Victoria, I believe Sanishton, and uh, the family used it as a bike jump back, you know, way back when. So was, to have that on my wall is like to have, you know, the crown jewel of the queen. I, that's just, I, to me, it's just the coolest thing ever. My collection, however, has dwindled down just a tad. I had to afford a engagement ring, but that's far more important. But uh, I'm really happy that I'm left with a lot of cool signs. But um, yeah, this has been a huge part of my life. And I know the Wilson's build motto, if you've looked closely, is building, finding, and sharing. And we've done a lot of building and a lot of sharing. Sorry, I just gave you the bird. But uh, we haven't done much finding. And the reason I put finding in there is because I want to take you guys along with me to find some of these signs. Because believe it or not, I have found most of these signs. I think the only one I bought in store was this guy. This is a blue belt tobacco sign. Puts the OK and smoke in. And that is probably one of my coolest signs in my entire collection. I got this out of the United Kingdom in a place called Norfolk in Snettensham, a place at an antique shop called the Granary. Or the Granary? Granary? I'm not too sure. But uh, this is a cool sign because I know nothing about it. I know a lot about blue belt tobacco, but I've never seen a yellow with blue. And I've looked a lot on Google and I've asked a lot of experts and they don't know much about it. So that to me, is a really cool story in itself, being how rare this sign is. Some other notable signs in my collection that really are like gold to me, and they're not in the best condition, are my Ogden's uh, Guinea Gold. And I might be butchering that Guinea Gold, I don't know, but these were found underneath Government Street here in Victoria, British Columbia. I can add the photo in there. And as you can see right on the corner, they, uh, of the, there's a tobacco shop here. And this that photo there is 1891, so you know, far over a hundred years and the one above it is 1912 and the tobacco shop is still there on the corner but I've obviously a lot of other things are developed since then and these were found in 2022 uh, underneath the concrete and behind each kind of store there had underground like a cellar and uh, when they were redoing it and kind of building the foundation up again they found these underneath there. And luckily, my uncle who owned the antique shop is right there. And I was able to get my hands on both of them because he knows how much I like um, Victoria history. So thank you, Petey. And uh, I mean, these are terrible. I mean, like, like they're in really bad shape, um, but they're like the coolest thing to me. I like kind of like the tattered, rustic look of these signs. And you know, nobody faked this patina. These are actual, real, hundred and plus year old signs that survived. So a lot of people ask me why the Roadster? And uh, simple answer, I've always wanted a Roadster. I always thought they were the coolest cars on the road. Uh, mind you, my dream was a 32 Roadster for a very long time. I didn't know much about 28, 29, 30 and 31. And realistically, I didn't, uh, I didn't know the difference. You know, the 28, 29 being a much smaller body and being used, you know, more, I would say, affordability to build a hot rod. Uh, you know, 32s are astronomically expensive, whether that's a glass body. Original bodies are like way crazy. Um, and even like reproduction bodies are 20,000 bucks. So that being said, I'm really happy I was you know, given the information about this roadster from Lee Grant and a guy named Bruce Donnellan, who's also like an incredible builder that I have the privilege of knowing. And um, yeah, the reason I chose this roadster is because that was the first roadster that came up that I could probably work on without doing like major body work. 
All right, so once you answer the question, why the Roadster? Everyone asks like, well, why are you building it like that? Why didn't you put this? Like, why didn't you do that? And realistically, the answer stays basically the same. It's because this is kind of what fell into my lap for like, a f and it was affordable. I mean, I'm trying to build this semi period correct to like a mid fifties to early sixties. And everyone's like, well, why don't you put a Ford motor in it? You have to put a Ford motor in a Ford. It, you can't put it, it's like sacrilegious. And it's like, okay, well tell that to all the really well-known builders in Hot Rod Magazine throughout the er, mid fifties to early sixties. And they were putting small block chevs in their Fords because they were light, they were fast, they were easy to work on and easy to find parts for. And they were really reliable. And that's a big reason why. I mean, yeah, I probably could have put a uh, 4302 in here. But to me, this is just like the small block Chevy is like the quintessential, like cool hot rod motor. Yes, flatheads are cool. But like, I don't know, just the distributor at the back and like the flow of it all. To me, these just look like the cool motor. And I know they're overused and they're overused for good reason because they are a really affordable, reliable motor. It's kind of like- So for those of you who don't know this car, this is a Chev 350, a Turbo 350. I have Lakester headers, obviously. I built the custom exhaust fully in a prior YouTube video. It's all 316 stainless besides the resonator, one of the mufflers, I should say. This is a 1964 to 66 Ford Mustang radiator and these work perfect inside a chopped 32 grill, as you can see. Um, and realistically, I've just kind of built it as I've known to build it, um, or I should say like to my ability. So I'm really happy with the work we've done because it's really coming together now, and I hope you guys are as well. All right, guys, I'm gonna call that video there. I don't know how long it's gonna be once we edit it, but uh, super happy that I was able to finally introduce myself, even though I do it in every video, but a lot of you guys probably just watch the videos and don't really know why I'm doing them and kind of my passions and my hobbies beyond the hot rods. And you know, it's one thing saying like, I like antiques, I like old signs, I like this, I like that. But showing you guys and kind of showing you the passion behind these is what I wanted to do. And that was my goal when I created this channel and uh, hopefully we'll be able to take you guys on a journey soon to grab some porcelain or some antiques or so on and so forth. And uh, eventually, I would like to start doing kind of that regularly, if we can, of course. I mean, a lot of the stuff on the island's already picked. Um, I've been fortunate enough, like in this scenario, to grab these two signs um, and so on and so forth. But we have some big trips planned. Uh, coming this year, or I guess next year now, we're gonna be going to the UK again at the end of December. So there might be a little video gap there, but there's some cool stuff over there that I am gonna make a video of. And then we're going to the Grand National Roadster Show in the end of January. So that's gonna be a really cool video as well. And that'll be more of like a, I, wouldn't, I don't wanna say like a lifestyle video, but more of like a, a traveling kind of video kind of realm of, it won't be, working on hot rods, but it's going to be hot rod and collector orientated, similar to this video. But uh, if you liked the video, guys, please drop a comment below. Um, I'd love to see and hear you guys about your collections. Um, message me on Instagram. I love when you guys do that, um, showing me your collections of, for example, hot rod magazines or speed parts. I've had a couple guys message me about like and message back and forth about collectibles and speed parts and so on and so forth. But anyways, guys, Thank you for tuning in to today's video. I know it wasn't as exciting as the rest, but uh, thank you very much for watching Wilson Builds. It was nice meeting you guys, I guess, officially, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>